Uh, I'm just wondering, I mean, by all measures, Latin America has had a pretty good head start to see sort of what happened in Asia, to see what happened in Europe, to see what happened uh, in the U.S. and in North America. How prepared are these countries down there, Central America, South America, for what now appears to be coming their way? So it's interesting. There have been very different reactions from different governments. So some of them took that advice. They saw what was happening around the world, and they immediately started shutting their borders, closing the airports, having citizens isolate themselves. So we saw Peru, Chile, Argentina, others really take that advice to heart. On the other side, we see the two biggest economies, Brazil and Mexico, their presidents being rather nonchalant telling people they can still go out to restaurants, telling people that it hasn't hit there yet and, and maybe won't come. So you see very different approaches from the leadership down there. Is there faith in the government um, in Brazil and Mexico when, when the leaders there seem to shrug it off and uh, act casual about it? Or are people in those countries taking their cues from neighboring countries where they're treating it with a lot more seriousness? Because um, any kind of walling yourself off doesn't really work if there are some countries that are participating and others that are uh, letting their borders be pretty porous. Yeah, you've started to see other people begin to react. So the business community is reacting. You started to see other politicians, opposition politicians or governors, take it into their own hands. So, for instance, the head of Sao Paulo, one of the biggest cities in Brazil, they have shut down the city of Sao Paulo, even though Brazil itself is not shut down. And I think a tip in this, what the citizens are thinking, especially in Brazil, we saw Brazilians are famous for when they can't go outside, banging their pot. So you've seen lots of these, they call them, you know, pot banging sessions where people, a cacophony every night as people are trying to get their president to listen to the rest of the international community. So you do see the politics turning against these two presidents as people see the international news. All right, so Shannon, so what does this mean, though, for the economies there? I mean, we had uh, several economies there were already sort of on a uh, somewhat shaky footing. I mean, obviously, you know, Argentina had the debt issues. You have uh, other nations like Venezuela, uh, as well as some of the other Central American nations, uh, already seen prior to this COVID-19 crisis to already be sort of having trouble sort of getting their arms around any sort of recovery. How much, I guess, cushion do, do these countries have to be hit by this economically, and what's going to be the outcome down the road? Well, you see, Latin America was, before all this hit, the region that was going to be the slowest growing region in the world. So it already is a stagnating place in many countries, and as you were mentioning, Venezuela, Argentina in recession. You know, we do see there a really uneven ability or capacity to respond to this. So there are some countries that have pretty low debt to GDP ratio. So they have space for a fiscal stimulus. So you look at Peru or Chile or Mexico for that matter, where they could expand, especially in a world of very low interest rates. You have other countries that have no capacity at all. So you mentioned Argentina. They're trying to renegotiate right now $70 billion worth of debt with in, in, uh, international creditors. So they have a challenge there. Brazil has a pretty high debt to GDP ratio. So some of these countries are not going to be able to stimulate their economies in the way that we're talking here in the United States. You know, the other challenge I would say a lot of these countries have is a big portion of their workforces work in the informal sector. So they're not in offices. They're not in jobs that are registered with payroll. They're not, they don't have social security numbers, those sorts of things. So if governments are trying to reach those people, both to take care of them in terms of health, but also to reach them in terms of a stimulus, let's say a payment or like, it's hard to reach big percentages of these populations.